Oh hi, I'm the heretic. So let's not beat around the bush. The European Union is going to destroy the internet as we know it in less than a month. So what's going on? The European Union is debating a new set of rules on copyright. The proposal is known as Article 13 of the <gasps> Proposal for a Directive of the European Parliament and of the Council on Copyright in the Digital Single Market. That's a mouthful. Just call it Article 13. Not to be confused with Article 13 of the European Union treaties. What makes this rule so dangerous is that it expands copyright laws. A lot. Now the fact that the EU somehow got the power to determine that ideas are property, which they aren't, but has appointed itself the power to protect it at the cost of everyone else is bad enough, but we'll ignore that. The idea is if there's an EU common market in trade, there should be a digital EU common market as well, for some reason. So what better way to enable the free exchange of ideas while protecting intellectual property of content creators online than taxes? More specifically, copyrighted content linked to on a social media platform will require the platform to get a license from the copyright holder for the privilege of hosting a hyperlink. If they don't, then the platform would have to pay the EU. Now how much would this link tax cost? How much would these licenses be? I don't know. But just try to imagine what this could mean. Imagine you link to an article on Reddit, or you're sharing a news story about a possible new life-sustaining planet on your favorite message boards, or you're looking for a remix of that one song you can't get out of your head. Imagine sharing the outrage of the day via email to your family. All of that will be money these platforms will be forced to pay to the EU, either through taxes or licenses. This will be massively stifling to new startups and limit people's access to information. At least accurate information. Because sharing news articles is now unnecessarily risky, news sites will be disincentivized from using reputable sites. And let's be honest, the Daily Stormer isn't going to be charging for linking to it. Hmm, now that I think about it, I wonder if this could backfire. But it gets even worse. Links being taxed is bad enough, but websites will also be obligated to police their own content to prevent any form of copyright infringement. You see, under new rules, web platforms will be directly liable for copyright infringement on the part of their users. And to avoid this, they'll need censorship machines, artificial intelligences that can detect and filter user content if it even resembles copyrighted content. Interestingly, Google and Facebook already have content filters, so how well do they work? They don't. YouTube filters intended to remove extremist content by censoring ISIS flags ended up deleting tens of thousands of videos trying to expose ISIS atrocities. Family Guy used a video clip of an old video game from someone's YouTube channel. The filter found the original video and removed it for infringing on Family Guy's copyright. NASA uploaded a video of their own Mars landing on their own official YouTube channel, but because the same footage was played on some TV channels, the algorithms registered it as a copyright violation. YouTube's filters even filed a copyright claim for stolen music on a 12-second video of a purring cat. And let's not even get to the algorithms that Twitter has manipulated. So yeah, it doesn't work. And that's not even the worst part. You see, these filters cost tens of millions to create, and even if someone were willing to sell these filters rather than having them go through the expense of making their own, that's still going to be a gigantic expense. Every website on the planet that might host copyrighted content in the EU would be affected. GitHub, Reddit, Pinterest, Twitch, Imager, WordPress, Dailymotion and Vimeo, Gab, BitChute, take your pick! If there is even the possibility copyrighted content might be hosted on their platform by their users, they'll be forced to acquire a license for usage from literally every copyright holder on the planet if they want to avoid legal trouble with the EU. Not every website has Google or Facebook's resources. They couldn't justify that kind of expense. Thus, they'd have three options. One severely restrict their users' ability to do anything except possibly post text. 
lest they post a copyrighted hyperlink, video, or picture. Two, they go through the expense and bite the bullet, or three, they just shut down completely. The massive costs of implementing these censorship machines will keep out competitors and effectively cement the dominance of huge monolithic media corporations. Now call me crazy, but I don't fancy my internet being under the control of a monolith corporation that hates my guts, that the status priesthood subsidizes for hundreds of millions of dollars and therefore has complete control over. Make no mistake, this is government censorship by proxy. But actually, there's a fourth option, but I'll discuss that later. Now who stands to gain from this? Music record labels who have seen their sales just plummet in the digital age as people look for music for free, newspaper publishers who want to protect their content, and other big dinosaur media conglomerates. But heretic, you're an American reptile. Why do you care what happens in the EU? Aside from principles, the EU has a population of about 600 million, meaning that whatever happens there could affect the whole internet. You don't think YouTube or BitChute wouldn't implement a filter across the whole world and not just Europe? Give me a break. It's going to have a chilling effect on what content is allowed on their websites. Let's players and gaming channels will be all but banned. News and commentary channels will be banned from using news footage or even screenshots of news articles. Music remixes or even original fan themes will be banned. Original composers whose music even resembles copyrighted music for three seconds? Banned. Comic dubs? Banned. Movie and TV commentaries and reviews? Banned. And that's just on YouTube alone. After all, if they don't, then they're legally liable for the fines, taxes, and fees involved which, let's be honest, will be extortionately expensive. Fair use? Sure, but you'll have to prove that your content is protected. You are guilty until proven innocent. Isn't that wonderful? Seriously though, you can forget about fair use under this regime. So this is a lot to digest. Let's sum it up. If this becomes law in Europe, websites will need to pay the EU to host hyperlinks they don't have a license to host, and copyrighted content that isn't expressly permitted by the copyright holder is banned. What the EU wants to have happen is that you must prove your legitimacy to host hyperlinks. The cost for compliance will be so high, websites are either going to shut down or stop doing business in Europe altogether. The internet would consolidate around companies that can afford compliance, though the more likely result is that the EU will become an internet black zone, completely isolated from the west of the web and filled with inoffensive, sterile, vacuous drivel. And I'm not even talking about political speech. That'll be gone too, but there'll be no more memes, no more reaction gifs of your favorite TV shows, no more music remixes, no more commenting, no more reviewing movies, games, or TV shows. It's really gonna suck. But why would they do this? What comes to mind first is that this is a milker bill, a type of legislative proposal not intended to pass, but to create controversy. The idea is that one side or another would be panicked enough into donating to the campaigns of the priesthood of statism to try and sway them for or against the bill. For example, let's say a hypothetical bill is proposed in the U.S. Congress that will increase taxes in the, I don't know, air conditioning industry up 50%. Naturally, the air conditioning lobby will donate to the campaigns of Congress people to try and kill the bill. Now, as you can probably guess, the ultimate milker bill is one that can get both proponents and opponents to donate to the priesthood of statism, getting publishers, music labels, and big news against digital media and free internet advocates, like Sopa and Pipa. So the point of Article 13 would be to scare people out of their money. The other possibility is that they're being earnest. Just Consider what's been happening these past few years in Europe. Migrant rape gangs being largely ignored in the UK and in the Netherlands. Also in the Netherlands, Gert Wilders was put on trial for criminally insulting Islam. Finnish courts say you could be prosecuted for slandering Islam if you don't distinguish between Islam and radical Islam, as though there is a difference. 
Germany wants to fine social media companies that fail to take down hate speech, whatever that means, to the tune of $57 million. Spain arrested someone who called cops slackers. Ah, Spain. Who could forget about Spain's crackdown on Catalonian independence movements? Then there's the UK again. Ah, the UK. Where do I start with you, wankers? Tommy Robinson was kidnapped by police for reporting on the news, 1984 style. The judge then orders a complete media blackout on the kidnapping, and within six hours of the arrest, he is sentenced to 13 months in prison. Now here's what makes this interesting. Kevin Crehan, and I'm probably butchering that name, was sentenced to 12 months in prison for putting a bacon sandwich in front of a mosque. He was murdered in prison shortly after. Given the number of credible death threats made against Robinson for his critique of Islam, the UK government sentenced him to die. Not like that's an unusual thing in the UK anymore, courts sentencing innocent people to die. Judge Anthony Hayden sentenced Alfie Evans to die because of a personal disagreement he had with the attorney. And in a hospital, what a horrible place for a child to die, especially given that UK hospitals burn the remains of aborted fetuses and miscarried children to heat their hospitals. What the hell is wrong with you people? I wonder if needing to heat their hospitals is why Ireland legalized abortion. Then again, despite their pressing need in the UK to crack down on military-style semi-automatic assault potato peelers, at least their priesthood of statism isn't so insane as to recommend knives be made duller, so as to make them more useless while also making the stabbings this will absolutely not prevent even more painful for their victims. After all, the priests have heard of blunt force trauma, right? What the hell am I saying? Of course they want to ban sharp things. I could do this all day, but I've made my point. The governments in Europe are wildly authoritarian, and this will fit perfectly into that pattern of behavior. Now, it's either a milker bill or the next step on the ladder towards totalitarianism. Now, one might ask, why not both? Well, that's a good question, but a milker bill is not intended to actually become law as that would mean that they couldn't bring up the issue again in the future, no matter how much they want it ideologically. But which one is it? Now, I don't know enough about the EU Parliament's pattern of behavior to make a judgment, so I'll let you decide. Either way, this bill is absolutely horrible and needs to be destroyed. But there's still more to it? Has this bill been tried in the past? Yes, it has actually. Three times, in fact. Belgium acquired websites particularly news aggregators like Google News, to pay a link tax to host the links on their site after newspaper publishers complained to get the tax implemented. Google News then stopped hosting the links of their complainers. Germany required news aggregators like Google News to pay a link tax to host the links on their site after newspaper publishers complained to get the tax implemented. Google News then stopped hosting the links of the complainers. Then Spain required websites, particularly news aggregators like Google News, to pay a link tax to host the links on their site. Gee, I wonder what happened next. Except this time, Google News left Spain entirely, which devastated Spanish news. So take a guess what's going to happen when this law affects the whole continent. Well, I can see it backfiring tremendously. And not just because the monolith newspaper publishers or record labels who rely on social media for people to find their stuff will be crushed too. Europeans are going to want to send memes, trade, and do all sorts of things that they can still do today. They might build peer-to-peer -peer networks and host them on the blockchain. These terms might be confusing, so I'll just put it this way. Imagine being your own social media platform where every video link, and picture shared was so well encrypted that it would take the government 50 million years to figure out who sent what and to where. It's a social media network that would be impossible to regulate, made only possible because the traditional platforms are so undesirable and unprofitable. Though perhaps most amusingly, alternative media sites won't charge for their links or copyright licenses, meaning 
they'll be shared and sourced more often compared to dinosaur media outlets who will undoubtedly place outrageous costs on their licenses. Great work, governments. You're sowing the seeds of your own dissolution. As if people being pissed off about the internet being destroyed potentially doesn't already do that. But here's a more important question. Why can they do this? They do not own the social media networks, and even if they did, they own things the same way a bank robber might own a diamond necklace he stole. Therefore, they have no property claim. Legal jurisdiction? The state gave themselves a monopoly on arbitration and enforced this through violence, the initiation of which cannot be justified. There's no logically consistent justification for the European Union's presumption of authority over digital content in Europe, because nothing can exist in nature that is inconsistent, and consistency is preferable to inconsistency. Therefore, the EU does not have authority over the internet and everyone in the glass building needs to go away and get real jobs. Awfully fitting, the shape of the EU building. After all, that's all the European Union is. Just another Tower of Babel built by arrogant assholes who think that with just the right amount of authoritarianism, everything would be perfect. It won't, and it'll end the same way it did in Babylon, with everything falling apart and the people scattering to the winds when they realize that they don't speak the same languages. It doesn't enter the next stage of the legislative process until June 20th or 21st, so there's still time to stop this. Computing Forever did two great videos about it. I recommend you watch his stuff. Links in the description. Spread the word. Agitate everyone you know. Tweet your feelings to members of the EU Parliament on Twitter. And yes, do be polite. They're more likely to take you seriously if you're mild-mannered. Just saying. If this passes, then for all of us as internet users, the next few years are gonna suck. But if it must happen then let's at least march forward into the future with the certainty that we stood our ground, planted our flag, and said to the authoritarian sociopaths in Brussels, no, you move. Remind me again why Europe needs a European Union again. Questions? Comments? Critique? What is your least favorite part of this <laughs> legislation? What do you think will happen if the EU succeeds at this? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.